Lati, Smith, Laura. Thanks for joining me today. So today we've got some postural setup as normal, and then a little bit of standing strength, and then we come down to our mats for our mat work. And today I'm going to offer you the option of using a prop for the end of the session when we do our abdominal work, our upper abdominal work. And I've got just a, a heavy cast iron pot lid. You can use a dinner plate or you can use an ordinary pot lid. You can have a little bit of weight to it, but you don't have to. It'll, it'll assist us with one of the exercises that we're going to do. If you don't want to use one, again, it doesn't really matter. So I just pop this out of the way just now because we're not going to use it to the end. And let's start with our feet about hip distance apart. Soften into the knees, lift and lengthen through the spine. The string coming from the top of our head, drawing us up towards the ceiling. Just draw the shoulders up, back and down and in towards the spine with a little pinch between the shoulder blades. The chest is nice and open. We've got the pelvis in a stable position, either in neutral or as close to neutral as you can achieve today. Engage into the core stabilizing muscles. First of all, the zip runs from pubic bone to navel, in and up about a third of the way to engage the pelvic floor. Wide belt runs around our midsection with 10 notches on it and we're just going to do it up to the third notch. So now that we're set up, let's do some squares with the shoulders for a change, to, as a change to a circle. So let's lift the shoulders up, back and down, and then forward, up, back and down. So we're just making a square pattern. So it's like a variation on a shoulder shrug. It's just really to get the shoulders mobile and to get the fluid around the joint warmed up so it moves and glides nice and easily. Let's just do one more of these. And then lastly, allow the shoulders to slide back, back and down in towards the spine, with a little pinch between the shoulder blades. Inhale. And as we exhale, drop the chin towards the chest. Inhale and lift. Exhale, drop the right ear to right shoulder. Inhale to lift and exhale and drop to left shoulder. Inhale, let's repeat. Remember not to do anything that doesn't feel right for your body. So if this is not for you, you can just turn the head gently from side to side if that's comfortable or whatever feels right for you to mobilize the neck. Some days are different to others as well. So maybe it depends on what you've been doing in your active everyday life, or maybe the way you've been holding yourself, or even the way that you sleep can affect how your neck feels. I'm gonna do that one more time through. Remembering the repetitions are only there as a guide, so just do what you feel you can. And then lastly, bring the head through the centre. And inhale. And as we exhale, we bend to the right. Inhale, lift back up through the centre. Exhale, bend to the left. So all we're trying to do here is lengthen the waist. Soften into the knees. Anchor into the heel and into the ball of the foot. And as you lift through the centre, try and lift an inch taller. Two more to each side. So allow your hand just to run up and down your leg. So the last one to each side. Drawing the bottom rib down towards the hip and opening up the other side of the body. And then lastly, bring it up through the centre. Inhale. Exhale, float the arms up to about chest height. And then inhale, exhale, draw the right elbow back, look towards the elbow. So we're, we're rotating through the midsection of the spine. Keeping the hips facing directly forward. That's important here. Hips like headlights, shining directly ahead. And as you draw the elbow back, you can feel the shoulder blades coming closer together. Let's do one more on each side. You might find yourself going further around on one side than you do on the other. 
but that's perfectly normal. And then lastly, just float the arms back down. We're just going to take the feet a little wider for some squats to mobilize the hips, knees and ankles. Your toes will turn out slightly depending on the shape of your pelvis. So set up, lift, lengthen, stabilize, connect into the core. Inhale, drop the hips back and down, weight coming into the heels and just exhale and stand. And all we do with the arms is just floating the arms up and back down again. Allow the knees to slide towards the toes in line with the middle of the foot. If you feel that you can and you would like to, then we can float the arms a little higher, maybe shoulder height, or even without lifting the shoulders, floating the arms up and overhead. So you're sitting the weight back and down. And as you push up, big push through the heels to stand. Let's just float the arms back down to chest height again. And we're going to add on. So on the next one, as we rise up, you're going to float up the right knee. So the right knee floats up and we drop down into squat and now we float up through the left knee. So we're coming down through the centre of the movement. Make sure that when you squat back down again that you're bringing the weight down through both feet. We're just bringing in a little bit of balance practice but balance is optional in Pilates. If balance isn't your thing today, then that's okay. Just do the squat. Or just do a squat with a little bit of a weight shift. Now on the next one, we're going to hold up the right knee, hold it up, in line with the hips, float the arms up. Inhale, as we exhale, a little tip from the hip, it'll bend, bending in that front knee. So this is called a, a dynamic balance. Just keep your back leg bent and moving the arms and leg at the same time to encourage stability. Two more. You might wobble around like me. That's okay, that's just our brains and bodies finding stability. Last one, float the knee up and down, ready for our squat again. Squat down, this time we're going to lift left knee first. Squat, lift right. It helps with balance if you look up and forward. It helps us to, to come up tall as we stand. Just checking the alignment of your knees again. So they should be in line with the hip. Maybe coming up to hip height, but certainly no higher. And they can in fact be a little bit lower if you need to. We're going to hold the next one up. Find your balance. Maybe find a point to focus on. Inhale, exhale, little tip. And then the arms come back like wings. Balance is great for our focus, our concentration. And also it's really good for Keeping it young, apparently. It's worth a try. <laughs> Let's do one more after this one. I'm up for that. And the last one. Lift the knee. Float it back down. Give your legs a little shake to release. And come to the end of your mat to face into centre. Set up. Soften the knees. Lengthen through the spine. Engage into the core, inhale, exhale for a roll down, roll down through the spine, vertebrae by vertebrae, relax the head and neck, relax the arms, and just come down as far as you feel that you safely can. And then inhale, and exhale and roll up, stack the spine, vertebrae by vertebrae, and the head is the last thing to come up. We're going to do that twice more. Remember, if, back, if the roll down isn't for you, your back doesn't like it, you have a couple of options. You can rest your hips against a wall, bring your feet forward so you've got enough room to roll down and up. Or you can lay down on the mat 
and just do some gentle lumbar rolling. Keeping your pelvis stable as you roll down, maintaining that softness in the knees and stacking the spine like it's a bicycle chain, link by link. We're just going to take one roll down now to bring us down to the mat. Inhale, exhale. And as you start to come to the bottom of the roll down, we're going to bend the knees and walk the hands up and come all the way in onto our fronts. For our diamond press salute. Start with the diamond press. Give yourself a nice diamond shape with the arms. Legs are about hip distance apart. Fingers are pointing, elbows are out wide. And as you look down, your eye line should be roughly in line with the center of the diamond. You can rest your forehead on something if you need to. Pushing on a block. So let's start with that setup. Always creating that strong foundation. Length, stability, connection into the core. Inhale to prepare. Exhale, peel off the mat, looking down into the center of the diamond, sliding the shoulders away from the ears. Inhale. Exhale, keep looking down into the center of the diamond. Now, if this is as far as you want to go with this exercise, then that's absolutely fine. Otherwise, after this one, we're going to go into our diamond press salute. At the top, inhale, exhale, float front hand up to foreheads. Inhale and lower, exhale, do the same to the back. Inhale, exhale. Now the important thing here is that nothing else changes so the shoulders don't move and we're just lightly saluting fingertip to forehead. Now I know there's a difference between the different forces, the Army, the Navy and the RAF. So I'm really not sure which salute this is, but the palm is open to front. I've got a funny feeling it might be the navy, but I might be wrong. Answers on a postcard. <laughs> Let's do one more on each side. And then release. Rest your hands, your head on your hands. So make a cushion with your hands one on top of the other. Rest your head, your legs are still hip distance apart. You've still got everything else in place. Just check the core is engaged and inhale. Exhale, lift the legs up, take them out to the side, bring them back in through center as you inhale and then lower. Exhale. Inhale. Now, if you prefer, you can just do one leg at a time. So, lifting both legs is going to put a lot of pressure through the core to keep the spine stable. And if you feel anything in your lower back, then please just go to single leg one at a time. So we should feel this in and around the hips, into the inner thigh, into the glutes. Feel the legs engage as you lift them up nice and straight. One more time. And then we're going to hold. We're going to flex the feet. Then we tap the heels, just tap, 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 tap. Well, that's getting into the inner thigh now. So five more, five, four, three, two, one, and then release. Hands under the shoulders, push back. Give yourself a little stretch into child's pose. Now it would be ideal if we were up this end of the mat rather than the middle for our next exercise. So set it up, bring the hands under the shoulders and the knees under the hips. 
lengthen away through the spine and bring your eye line down between your hands, but a point in front of your hands to keep the neck long. So we've got the core engaged and the hips pointing down to the mat. We're going to tuck the back toes under. Inhale, and then exhale, and then push into the arms to lift your knees just off the mat. Your spine should still be stable. Inhale to lower. Exhale, push. Now this might be enough for you today, which is fine. You can do this. You can take a rest back into child's pose anytime you need to. Or we're going to do one of my very favorite exercises, the bear crawl. <laughs> Only four small steps for the bear crawl. So on the next one, if you'd like to join me, hold up the bear crawl and then we're going to take back arm and front leg. One, two, three, four and then back, two, three, and four. Small steps. So we make ourselves feel light by engaging into the core. You want to keep the movement through the hips to a minimum. And the knees are close to the mat. Lengthen into the spine, and as soon as we start to work a little harder, Tension is going to come into the shoulders, but we want to make sure that we don't allow the shoulders to come up towards the ears. Let's do two more. A great strengthener for the core and for the arms and the shoulders. Last time back. And then release. Go back to child's pose. That's got us a bit warm. Maybe breathing a little heavier, or is it maybe just me? And then carefully release. Come onto your side, any side. Let's set up with a static side kick. Support your head. Bring your body into a straight line with a space under the chin. Your free arm is either on top or it's resting lightly in front. Inhale. Engage into the core. Exhale. Float the top leg up. Before you lift the bottom leg, just check the hips are directly stacked, one on top of the other. And then inhale. Exhale. Lift the bottom leg. And then inhale. And as we exhale, small circle with the leg. Any direction, it doesn't matter because we're going to change direction. So maybe start to now inhale through one part of the circle and exhale through the other. And just be aware of the position of your hips. So the hips are absolutely still. Think about one of those mathematical instruments, the compass where the point is the bottom leg and the top leg is drawing that perfect circle. Changing direction. Remember to keep the breathing pattern flowing. So we're working around the hips. The hip rotators, abductors, One more in this direction. And then one leg on top of the other. We lower bottom leg, then top leg. Bend the knees, release into the hips. Push up, bring yourself onto your elbow. I am gonna offer you the option to come up onto the hands in a minute. So you can do whatever you like, whatever feels right for you. Legs straight out in front. Bend the bottom leg, but try to make sure that it's not coming out and relaxing forward. It's still in line with the torso. Then from here, we can inhale, exhale, push up, maybe come onto your hand, but nothing else has changed. So we've got a three point system contact with the mat. Now from here, we're gonna reach up and extend the top arm over the top, or you can reach it up to the ceiling. And then inhale, 
exhale and lift that top leg. Now you can either just hold this for up to 10 breaths or we do some small flutter pulses with the top leg. So we're actually forcing the muscles mainly on the outside of the, the hip and thigh to work a little harder by the pulsing movements. So we're moving blood around but only just a little bit and the muscles saying, oh, I'm getting oxygen then. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm getting oxygen. Oh, no, I'm not. And that forces change to happen quicker. So just 10 more small pulses. And we've got five. And then we bring it to a stop. We lower the leg and arm. And we come round to the other side, releasing on the, sh the shoulder if you need to. Setting up. for the, first of all, static side kick, which of course is always an option. Hands in front or on top. Strong foundation. Inhale, exhale. Core engaged as the leg floats up. Inhale, exhale, bottom leg up. Inhale, and start to create your circles. So you can actually use your mind's eye to visualize the circle on the side wall. Now it doesn't matter what size your circle is, what really matters is that you remain still through the torso, through the hips. Try and create an even semicircle on either side of the hip. Try and stop the shoulders lifted up towards the ears. One more in this direction and then we change. Maybe one direction feels more natural to you. Hopefully you can feel the muscles on the outside of the hip working. And on the inner thigh, of course, it's on the bottom leg, it's the inner thigh. That's helping to hold up that leg. One more time. And then one leg on top of the other, roll bottom, then top, bend the knees, give yourself a massage, push up. I like to bring in the elbow first. It just gives us that really stable base to set up the legs so we know that they're directly in line with the torso, bending the bottom leg. And then pushing up onto that arm and floating that arm up over the top. Inhale. Exhale and lift. Maybe just glance down and check that your leg hasn't gone behind, which sometimes can happen, especially if you've got a really lovely lumbar curve. You'll find that your leg might naturally want to go behind. Reach over, either hold up to 10 breaths, or we start to do the small flutter pulses. And what you'll probably feel is a sting, <laughs> a sting on the outside of the hip. That's change happening. We're getting stronger. 10 more. And then five. And then release. Come up, release the shoulder. Give yourself another massage if you need it. Come round onto your back for an abdominal section. Let's start with our, our prop. So if you've got your prop handy, just bring it a little closer. We won't use it straight away. And bring your feet a distance apart. Knees in line with feet. And hips, arms by our side. Lengthen. Create that strong base in which we're going to work, especially we're going to add an extra dab, um, prop to it. So we want to make sure that we've stabilised the pelvis either flat and neutral, slightly tilted imprint, engage into the core, float the fingers to the temples. Or of course you can support your head fully here. Keep the elbows wide. Inhale. After you engage into the core, zip and belt. Exhale, peel the head and shoulders off the mat, look towards the knees. Inhale to walk. Exhale to lift. So we're just warming up the upper abdominals 
Now we're going to be working the upper abdominals and also the muscles in the waist with a little combination. Space under the chin, keeping the neck in line with the spine, keeping the pelvis stable. Just two more. And then release, release the arms. If you've got your prop handy, you want to use it, let's take hold of it now. So you're holding it like it's a steering wheel and we're gonna bring it onto the chest. Then from here, we're going to do a, a, a crunch and a sort of side crunch and then a little pulse. And then we'll do the same, we'll alternate sides. So inhale to prepare. Exhale to crunch up, push your lid or plate to the ceiling and then lower back down again. So let's just do a few of these. So we want to make sure, especially if you've got a bit of weight in your prop, that we want to make sure that we're pushing it directly up towards the ceiling. So the hands would be directly above the shoulders. If you're doing without prop, then you can just imagine that you've got one and you can just reach your fingers towards the ceiling. So one more like this, and then we're going to add on. So on the next one, we're going to take it to front as we lift up through the center. As if we're steering our car, oh yeah, we're going this way. We come back into the center, we go the other way. Keep the hips still. Back to the center, three small pulses. Three, two, one, and release all the way down. So we will repeat, but we'll start to the back first this time. Inhale, exhale, lift, little turn through the steering wheel, center, other side, center, three small pulses, three, two, one, release. So we'll start front this time again. Up, steering your car, so the, the prop actually moves. Three pulses, three, two, one. And then again, we're coming up, we're going to the back. Steer to the front, steer, three pulses, three, two, one, and release. And we'll continue up, steer it, steer it, three, two, one. So we should be now feeling that we're working into the upper abdominals, into the waist. You're probably working a little bit into the arms and shoulders to hold up the weight or if it, even if it hasn't got any weight to it. You could imagine that there's weight to it and that will actually force muscle fibers to engage more. So sometimes it's not about the action, but the actual intention it works just as well. So we could imagine that we're holding one of those five kilo plates from the sports center and having to work a little harder. So one more time. Up. Twist. Three pulses. And then release. Now you can just release your legs. You can leave your weight on your, your chest if you want to release the arms. And for our next exercise, or is our last exercise, we're going to start with the legs, then we're going to add in some with the upper body, and then we're going to add in a crunch to finish if you'd like to do that. So set it up like we did before, feet hip distance apart, and land the knees and the hips, arms by our side your plate or lid is resting on your chest. Inhale, exhale, float one leg up to tabletop. So you're stabilized through the, the core, you've gone into imprint if you need to. And then inhale and exhale, float the other leg up. So in tabletop position, we've got the knees above the hips. We've got the shins parallel with the, the floor. Now from here, we're gonna take our plate up directly above our head. Inhale, exhale, take the weight behind the head, extend the front leg. 
inhale, exhale. So again, we could imagine that this is heavier than it actually is, especially here. So imagine you're holding one of those heavy weights and it's placing more pressure on the core because now you've got a weight going behind, you've got a weight in the leg taking, you, taking it forward and we're stabilizing the pelvis, we're keeping the neck long. Now you can continue with this or we could come up for a crunch in between. Crunch up, extend. Push the weight plate straight up to the ceiling, not forward. So especially if we get the chance to do this again in real life, <laughs> then it's really important that we keep all those points in place so when we're holding that heavy weight we'll have perfect technique we'll do one more of these to each side so if we've got a heavy weight here it will start to bring us forwards but if we create that really strong sun movement pattern now well, imagine what size that weight is. We'll have perfect technique. Release. Lower one leg down, then the other. Place your prop to the side. Let's take a full body stretch. Fingertips through to the toes. And then just relax. Let's draw the knees in towards the chest. Hold on to the thighs or the, the shins and just release yourself side to side, forward and back, whatever feels right for you. And then from here, we're just going to roll ourselves up in here. Exhale and we'll roll up. Let's start with a hand wrist stretch. Let's bring your right leg in front, 90 degrees, left leg behind. And then from here, we're going to tap from the head, inhale. Exhale and just bring yourself forward over your front leg. So you feel a stretch around the hip, probably mostly to the outside of the hip. Inhale, exhale. And we try not to just drop over like this because that doesn't really increase the stretch. Using the breath. One more breath, and then you're either going to bring yourself onto both knees to come up, or come onto your back knee and bring your front leg out for a hip flexor stretch. Let's inhale and exhale. Sink down into this hip, and then inhale to exhale, reach up. A stretch through the waist, and then start to bring that, that hand round to the outside of that thigh and this hand to the kidney area and just see if you can bring yourself round. Just bringing in that twist. Come back to centre, left to front toe, place your front hand down. We're just going to sink back into the hurdler stretch. You can take this hand and take it around the, the front of the foot to bring it behind the ball of the foot. As if you bring your toes to your shins, then inhale, exhale, drop the bum towards the heels, relax the head and leg. So hopefully you should feel a nice stretch into the hamstrings. Let's take an inhale and then exhale, so you can get that bum coming a little closer to the heels. And on the next inhale we'll release. Onto both knees, now bring your left leg in front 90-90 inhale and exhale uh, this might be like i mentioned in other sessions this is my tight side so let's enjoy if this is your tight side inhale exhale or if it was the other side hopefully you enjoyed that <laughs> so try and relax this leg if we've got it 90 degree angle it will just allow this to lengthen out instead of being sort of 
more relaxed. It gives the leg a little bit more purpose and also the brain knows exactly what we want to do here. So even as we stretch, we're thinking about alignment, we're thinking about a light engagement into the core. Just one breath. And on the next inhale, we push up, we come onto both knees or the back knee and bring that leg out and sink into the hip. So find that first of all, that stretch into the hip flexor. Inhale, reach up and exhale, a little stretch for the waist. And then an inhale and an exhale as we twist. Just use your hands and use your legs as a solid base for that all position. Try and look behind or over the shoulder or to the side. Lengthening into the spine to allow that thoracic spine to twist. Inhale through the center, lift the toes, land your hand, draw your toes towards the shin. And then relax the head and neck down. And use the breath. Inhale and exhale and really draw also navel to spine so we get the lower back to relax. And that will help the hamstring to stretch a little more. Next inhale, we're going to release. Come onto both knees, roll the shoulders. Take the hands behind, clasp the fingers, or place your hands at the base of your spine. Inhale, exhale, and open through the chest. Maybe take a look up if that's comfortable. Make sure the knees are under the hips. Inhale to release. Exhale, palm to palm, tuck the chin. Lift the shoulders to the ears and try and create a C shape through your spine. So you get a really nice stretch into the mid and upper back. And then release. Take yourself a seat. Find a comfortable position. Legs in front or anywhere you like. Just to say thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. I'm really thinking that hopefully, you know, we're into spring, the vaccine rollout is full steam ahead. It really won't be long. I'm really so looking forward to when we're back in the studio again.